evening again. Thank you, um, Steve. Uh, as Steve mentioned, I'm an attorney in Danvers. I've been practicing in Danvers for over 22 years. I worked with my dad for 17 of those 22. I have a master's in tax law. I do a lot of tax work. In addition to that, I do a lot of real estate, estate planning, Medicaid eligibility planning. Uh, I just want to highlight a few areas this evening that I thought were important for a small business owner to think about. How many of you out there have wills? Okay, a few of you have them. A few of you, you know, like, like most people, don't like to think about those types of things. They don't like to think about getting old. They don't like to think about dying short. And they don't like to think about, God forbid, if they have a disability or a accident happens now they can no longer work. But as you spend that 100 hours a week working in your job like the rest of us trying to make it go in this down economy, uh, what you want to do is you want to stop for a moment and at least think about and say, can I protect these assets that I've worked so hard for all these years, perhaps yourself or yourself and your spouse, your parents, your grandparents, even your children. You need to think about these things when you're, when you're looking at your financial plan, looking at your overall planning. What have you done today or what have you done this year to protect those assets? In my view, there's three main hurdles as you get older and as you go through life that are going to try to grab at those assets. One is liability. Are you protected from, for liability purposes? Are you protected from you causing an accident or something happening at your workplace or one of your children having a party at the house where you're away for the weekend. Are your assets protected? Have you done certain things? Because God forbid something does happen, but you know, oftentimes in my practice I've seen it. Things do happen and you need to be, you're smart and you're good at what you do. You need to be prepared. You need to have the tools around you and, and, and in place that are going to protect those assets. And you need to review that stuff. As Steve mentioned, Every few years, the tax man is getting more aggressive, as we see, they're going to stick their hand out. That's another concern. Liability concerns first, um, taxes, income taxes, estate taxes. What have you done to protect yourself? What have you done for income tax planning? As Steve mentioned, a lot of things are going to happen starting uh, in 2010 when they come out um, with new tax law changes, as we know, they're coming out and they're probably waiting until after the election in November to come out in full force with some more changes. Um, but the party's over. Uh, the cash for clunkers, that's over. The tax credit for, uh, you know, first-time home buyers, over. Okay, essentially. Um, so the government needs more of your tax dollars. So what have we done to try to uh, insulate ourselves, or at least do proper planning to protect our assets? And the third thing is Medicaid eligibility and long-term care insurance, and in planning for, uh, you know, God forbid, as we get older, either ourselves or our parents. I'm sure everyone has, you know, at least some knowledge of a friend or a family member that has gone through that experience of trying to protect those family assets from the nursing home proprietor. I know I didn't work my whole life to give my assets to a nursing home. And I think everyone sitting here is of the same mind. So just going through from the top, liability concerns. Uh, basically starting with, uh, you know, everyone should have adequate insurance. You want to annually or uh, at least every couple of years review your insurance. Is my insurance adequate for business liability? Do I have an umbrella policy, uh, which is extremely cheap? Um, uh, Dave Brewer is here from John Wallace Insurance. He's a member of our group. Um, do we have that type of insurance for a couple hundred dollars and an increase in my automobile and my home insurance? I can get that insurance company to be all obligated to defend me for another million dollars or another two million dollars or so on. So for a very small operating cost expense, I can make sure that my assets are protected insurance-wise. Um, a lot of people, and, and, and you can talk to Dave after, you know, they might be in a smaller business and they might be driving, the, driving their personal auto in that business. Well, if you hit me with your personal auto and you're in the scope of that employment, you know, might I look toward your business and might I look and see if your insurance is adequate? Is your insurance covering you in the scope of that employment? Maybe, maybe not. So those are all issues that you need to review. You need, again, you need to protect yourself and protect what you're working so hard for. Choice of business entity. I mean, why do people set up corporations? Why do people set up LLCs? They do it to insulate their personal assets from liability. Okay, so we set up these separate entities that are separate from us personally. We get a tax ID number, we set up a separate business entity that has limited liability and continuity of life. So these are things that you want to examine and look into. And there's different income tax treatments for those types of entities and different uh, you know, things that you need to look at. 
I do a lot of this. I have people come in all the time. They've got a great idea. All they see is the money at the end of the rainbow. They don't really think about, you know, well, I don't really know my partner that well. And I can tell you, it's, it's like a marriage. You have someone that you're doing business with, and you, he seems like a good guy, and he's going to do X. Um, we haven't really laid out who's exactly going to do what. And more often than not, in the first year, those businesses are going to fail because one person's doing more work than the other, or at least they feel that way, and one person is you know, taking more money out of the business, and that, that might cause the business to fail. So those things you need, to, you need to walk through, you need to do a business plan, you need to be sure that uh, that's well thought out. Declaration of Homestead. A homestead is a very cheap and, and convenient way of protecting your asset. Every state in the union has a homestead law. Massachusetts has a very generous one. They have $500,000 worth of coverage for your principal residence. And in Massachusetts, you have to proactively record a document at the Registry of Deeds declaring a homestead. Okay? And what that does, as I said, is that protects the first $500,000 of equity from creditors. Um, one thing that you have to be careful with is a lot of times, when I, ever do, when I do real estate closes for people, it's an automatic. I will always record the homestead as the last document the day of the closing, and that'll protect that equity. If the person later refinances or pulls an equity line, the mortgage for those instruments is going to kick out the effect of the homestead. So if you bought a homestead back when you bought your house 10 years ago and you pulled an equity line last year, you got to put that homestead back on there because you want to be sure that you're protected because the terms of that Fannie Mae mortgage do not allow anything to be in front of it and the terms of it will wipe out the effect of that homestead. Massachusetts for the last couple of years has been looking into revamping the homestead law. As I said, every state in the union has a homestead law. Some states like New Jersey and New Hampshire have an automatic homestead law. If, if, if the property is your homestead, when you record the deed, you get an audit automatic $125,000 exemption without recording another document. Massachusetts is looking, we're look, they were looking to do the same thing, have a $125,000 automatic. You could still record the $500,000 instrument to get the uh, additional equity protection. They're also looking to extend it to trust um, so that right now we do a lot of planning, we use a lot of trust. You can't get that homestead protection if you own the property in trust. But they've, they've had that law in the books for, well, that they've been proposing that law for the last couple of years. I'm not sure if it's going to make this session or not. One other thing, too, if you're married and you own the house uh, with your spouse, one person declares the homestead until you each are until you each either disabled or over age 62. If you're both over 62 and or disabled, then you can each declare a homestead protecting the first 500,000, actually a million dollars worth of equity protection. So it's, very, it's a very simple and a very easy tool that you want to look into. Federal and Massachusetts estate taxes in 2010. As Steve mentioned, there was a big shakeup in federal estate taxes this year. Since 1914, there's always been either an inheritance or an estate tax. The government gets you when you're alive and gets you when you're dead. Okay? So this was the first year there was no federal estate tax. Congress tried like heck in December to bring it back. They were unable to do so. So as, as Steve mentioned, the Steinbrenner estate lucked out, dying in 2010, there's no federal estate tax. And as he mentioned, with, with the Bush, George Bush had provided us with those uh, a graduated rate of exemption that basically went from a million dollars starting out back in 2002 and it gradually went up to the fact that in last year, up until December 31st of 2009, if you were a single person, you could have an estate of three and a half million dollars, no federal estate tax. Okay, Massachusetts level is a million dollars. This year, no federal estate tax. We still have the Massachusetts limit of a million dollars. The highest rate for Massachusetts is 16 percent. Uh, the highest rate for federal is 55 percent. Well, Congress realized that they weren't able to get that in, but the the, the law provides that next year, 2011. For a single person, the rate is not three and a half million; it's down to a million now. As I said, this you know Congress and, and, and this government needs to get more money, so they need to raise more revenue. So a lot of people who aren't aware of that will get caught in that net. Okay, see, so if you haven't done some simple estate planning uh, to provide for protection against that, you know your estate is going to be subject to that tax. So one of the things for married couples in the first estate. 
husband and wife, if everything goes to my surviving spouse, no tax in the first death, federal and state. So I could have a $100 million estate, no tax in the first estate. Where you get hit is in the second estate. So there's a lot of, there's some simple planning tools that we would use by the use of trusts um, to take advantage of the credits that were allowed. We're allowed um, the marital deduction credit, we're allowed that unified credit against federal estate tax. Uh, and as I said, it doesn't apply this year for federal purposes, but next year it's going to be a million dollars and a million dollars for state. So there are things that can be done to help plan. You know, if you have a taxable estate, you know you're going to have a taxable estate, you can use things like life insurance. You can set up an irrevocable life insurance trust so that we don't have to sell the house and we don't have to cash in the insurance to pay for the estate taxes.